Are you afraid? I'm a 27-year-old female, and this happened not too long ago. During the beginning of 2020, I was traveling to Kansas to see family and be with them for about a month before heading back downstate. I'd moved in down there for a cheaper living, but take it from me, everywhere you go will be the same. So as I took my trip, every few hundred miles, I stopped at some place on the highway to go to the bathroom and walk around. It had become night, and I stopped somewhere in the middle of nowhere at a rest stop. I'm not totally sure where it even was because I'd never been to the place, and I probably couldn't ever find it again. When I stopped and got out, I decided then I needed to go to the bathroom, but I really shouldn't have gotten out. I saw the guy looming around the women's bathroom, but I decided that it was more important that I got relief right then and there. I mean, I could have taken the next exit, but I went into the bathroom. When I passed him near the entrance, the guy whistled, and I just rolled my eyes and kept going. When I got done in there, I started to walk out, but he was standing there and stopped me. He made some strange sounds, and he started with the whole scumbag thing of asking me if I'd like to find a nice quiet place with him. This guy was a little older than I was, and he had that fuckboy look to him. Who tries to pick up girls at a rest stop bathroom? If that's not what pathetic is, I don't know. When I told him I wasn't interested, he became aggressive. He tried to back me up into a wall nearby to intimidate me, but when he pulled something out I thought was a blade, I ran in any direction I could to get away from him. I couldn't run to the car because I would have had to run past him, and he'd probably catch me and do who knows what he was thinking. This entire place was surrounded by woods, and there weren't any cameras that I could see. I ran into the woods to hide from him. I could still see him as he was kind of running in the direction that I did, but he stopped short and went back over to the bathroom entrances. I had to sit in the woods for a little while and watch him. He didn't leave, but I saw several women come up to the bathroom and he harassed them all. He didn't harass the older woman that came up there, so he was only after the younger ones. After around two hours, the guy finally jumped in some beat up old car and left. That's when I made a bolt for my car and got back on the road. I'm glad that I got out of there safely, but he could have actually chased me into the woods and caught me. It probably wasn't the safest decision for me to go in there, but he stopped because I guess he thought I'd come out eventually. He probably just forgot about me. He didn't seem like he was all there. So I spent a lot of time in the woods, but once I got back on the road, the real problem was that I immediately had to go back to the bathroom. I was fine the entire time I was out there, but as soon as I left the bathrooms is when my body decided that it was time to go again. I took the next exit and stopped at a gas station nearby, only to have the blood drain from my face. I pulled right up next to the guy, and I didn't even get the car in park before I pulled back off and left again. What are the odds that I'd run into him again? When I left there, I stopped on the side of a back road that nobody was going on to go into the woods yet again. This was not a good night for me. At least nobody bothered me when I stopped that time. I stopped drinking anything and just drove the rest of the way without stopping. Next time I make the trip from my house to my parents, I'll just bring one of those portable toilets with me and just use that. I'll never stop at a place like that again. I'll even get a cooler and bring drinks and food with me. I made it to my parents' house safely, but that guy is still out there, harassing people and maybe one day he'll meet that one girl who won't take shit. I can only hope it's all too soon.
I've always had a fear of rabid animals, and a healthy fear of just dangerous animals in general. I don't fear lightning or the dark by any means, and I don't really have any other type of fears. Growing up, we had a lot of squirrels, raccoons, armadillos, and other wildlife that were constantly walking about. My parents would often tell me never to approach an animal in the wild, because it could have rabies or something else. For those who don't know, rabies can and mostly always results in death in humans. Let me be clear that this didn't affect my life on a widespread level. I spent most of my time inside playing video games and going to school like most people my age. I did go outside and I did see wild animals on occasions, but it never controlled what I did. I just had a side fear of rabies and what it could do to someone. This story takes place after the summer of 2016, and I was heading back from a friend's house during the afternoon time. When I left his house, I heard a loud screech from my engine when I pulled off, and it startled me a bit. I'd never heard such a horrible sound coming from my engine before, and when it stopped, I was relieved. Maybe I should have just stayed at his house for the night and gotten my car checked out, because I no longer have that car. I got about halfway home and heard tweeting, so I pulled over to a rest stop. Right before I got to a parking spot, I heard all kinds of sounds including a loud pop and a slapping sound, and then knocking. I shut the car off as it wouldn't move anymore, but at least I'd gotten under a street light. What does the street light have to do with anything in the afternoon, you think? I was thankful for at least this because I was there until night time and then well after. So I got out of my car to check out what was going on and I found that the serpentine belt had snapped and my engine was destroyed. I had what's known as an interference engine and when the belt breaks the motor's basically destroyed. This was my realization as I put my phone down on the hood and walked around a bit to try to fight off urges to just go ape shit on the car. I paced back and forth wondering how I was going to get this fixed, wondering if this was the end of my journey with this car. I didn't have a whole lot of money and I might be out of a ride for a while. While all this was going through my head, I noticed a large dog was coming towards me. I don't know where he came from but I ran back to the car to get in and let the dog pass by. That's not at all what happened. When I opened the car to get back in, the dog came bolting over after me, and I shut the door only for the dog to jump on the side and start fiercely barking at me with deadly intent. I couldn't identify the type of dog. It was just some stray that might have gotten away from his owner. But the first thing that went through my head was this dog might have rabies. I mean, he was acting like he wanted to kill me and eat me. I would have been pissed about the paint on the car from his nails, but since the motor had just taken a shit on me, it wasn't my first concern. So I thought I'd just call someone to come out and help me. When I reached for my phone, I realized that it was still on the hood of my car, and there was a potentially rabid dog right outside my car still trying to eat me through the window. I moved to the other side of the car to see if I could open the window there and grab the phone from the hood, which was right in the middle, and the dog moved to the other side quickly and started to do the same thing. Several cars passed me and did nothing to help. I sat there in the smeltering heat until nightfall, when it finally started to cool down a bit. At this point I was very thirsty and I thought I was going to have a stroke. I was also very hangry and almost willing to get out and fight the dog who was still standing guard outside of my car. Every time I tried to open the window, he'd run back over and start angrily barking at me again. I was trapped in a dead car with an evil dog just outside, and no way to contact anyone. I'm sure I had a thousand missed calls from everyone asking where I was at as well. Finally sometime well after dark, the dog was scared away by a very loud and obnoxious road hog of a truck coming by, and that's when I opened up the door and quickly got my cell phone. The dog kind of wandered around the area, but he didn't leave just yet. 
I called my dad, who of course had called me countless times and left just as many voicemails. I told him the situation, and he was there in 30 minutes. I told him about the dog as well, and none of this went over well. It was all my fault. The car dying was my fault, the dog trapping me inside the car was my fault, and the only thing that he was concerned about was why I didn't call him sooner. Not the best person I know. He's one of those visor sunglass wearing Duck Dynasty pull yourself up by your bootstrap guys. We ended up getting the car towed which completely drained my bank account to where I couldn't even buy a drink on the way home. The bright side at least is that I didn't have a stroke. And once I got home, I told myself I was going to get myself a better car somehow, and I was going to drive far away from here. I ended up spending two years on that goal, and I couldn't be happier now. This is a story I remember from way back, but it still kind of scares me that this kind of thing can happen to anyone. My name is Scott, and I was 20 at the time. I used to go to my friend's place in the bigger city every weekend since he moved out there. We used to hang out all the time, and it would have only been about a 10 minute drive, now an hour. The night in question was a pretty bad one for me, seeing as it was the only time I'd ever had to stop because I was dancing in my seat from needing to take a piss. It's one of the worst feelings ever to need to do so when you're driving, and just wanting to get where you're going. So I stopped at this rest area that felt like I was stepping into a whole other world. Upon getting out of my car, there was a man in his 50s or so that approached me to ask me if I wanted to take a survey. I told him no, and he just kept on asking to trying to get me to do it. I told him to fuck off that I needed to take a piss. I wasn't in the mood to be messed with, and he was just in my way at the bathroom. He followed me into the bathroom to keep asking me to take his little survey, and the whole time I tried to drown him out with the sound of urine hitting water. I got out, washed my hands, and started back towards my car. He followed me all the way to the car, where he started to take pictures of me and my car. I don't know what that guy's problem was, but I was leaving and he could shove his survey up his ass. Once I pulled away, I saw him get into a large truck and follow me out. I drove down the road and he followed me trying to bully me on the road like a moron. He started to honk at me while he was riding my bumper. Was all this because I wouldn't take his survey? I don't really care what his reason was. I don't believe you should do this to anyone. If someone wants to be left alone and not bothered, then leave them alone. I finally got tired of him tailgating me and I stomped on the brakes to make him stop. He backed off my bumper for a little bit, but he persisted to try to bully me on the road. I pulled off an exit hoping that he wouldn't follow me down that way, but he did. Did this guy not have any other place to be? So as I was dealing with this guy, I called the police and told them I was stopping by their station because this guy was following me and being dangerous. They told me that they'd send an officer out to meet me once I'm there. I drove with this guy behind me for a few miles and pulled into the station. The guy kept going and I saw an officer pull out and go after him. I made a report and got back on the road. Thankfully for me, the station was very close and I could just drive right there. Of course, I wasn't about to lead this guy to my friend's place in the next city over, if he would have followed me that far. I'm not sure if or what they did to the guy, but I didn't see him again. Hopefully he won't be doing this to anyone else. Maybe he was stopped and given a ticket, I don't know. I would really like to know what that guy's problem was, even years later. Maybe I wasn't involved with this at all, but it was scary nonetheless. I've suffered with anxiety disorder all my life, and it's made situations like this hard for me. 
I'm a guy and I was on the highway around noon one day. I pulled up and sat there texting my mom that I had to stop because the drive was just killing me. It was a very long and excruciating drive that I couldn't do in one shot. I heard some noises outside of my car over the radio, so I looked up from my phone. A minivan and a small car almost hit each other in the parking lot just behind my car, and neither of them were moving. After a few minutes, I started to hear yelling and honking. I thought some shit was about to go down, and I was right. I should have pulled out of the spot I was in right then, but I didn't know I was about to be blocked in. The van was already blocking me in from behind, but then the small car backed out with a whip and blocked me in from making a turn and getting out that way. An old bloated man got out of the small car and walked over to the van, yelling. I turned my music down now, and I was listening to all this. They weren't getting out of their cars to be friendly with one another. This was a fight about to break out. I was sitting in my car freaking out, wanting to leave now, but I couldn't. There was a parking block in front of me, and the guy in the small car had parked sideways in the parking spot next to me, making it impossible to leave if I didn't want to hit either of them. The other old man got out of the van, and they started yelling at each other with their arms out in a what the fuck is your problem stance. They started swinging at each other. That's when I broke out into an anxiety attack, thinking that this could escalate into something really bad. I could see an older lady in the van, yelling out of the window for who I'm guessing was her husband to stop. Neither of them were backing down, and that's when I noticed one of them had pulled out a gun. The guy that got out of the smaller car was the one. He started waving it around, but the guy from the van still wasn't backing down. I still couldn't leave, even driving over the parking block. That would have torn my car to shreds and I would have been stranded there anyway. Thankfully, one of them decided it wasn't worth it and got back in his car. Once the van moved, I pulled out and blew out of the parking lot as there were still two screaming at each other from the windows. I stopped some ways down the road to calm myself down from that situation and was able to in about 15 minutes. I called my mother and told her what had just happened. She helped to calm me down, but also agreed that my response to the situation was normal. Once all the anxiety was out of the way, I started driving again. That was a very stressful thing to have to witness, and I've never seen anything like it before or since. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If you are subscribed, hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. I just have one question for you. Who is that behind you?